Alrighty, so here we're starting off with this page and uh, what you should probably do is press pause here and try to fill this out just kind of, you know, based on filling these in in terms of is it up or down um, in each one of these boxes as you go through. And then uh, go ahead and hit pause now if you haven't and then fill that out and then I'll go over the answers here in a second. So if there's an increase in aggregate demand, unemployment is going to fall right so we think like expansionary policy whether it's fiscal or monetary unemployment's going to fall inflation's going to go up because aggregate demand is going to go up which will pull up that price level and the opposite will happen if there's a decrease in aggregate demand so if the economy falls into recession let's say then unemployment's going to go up and inflation is likely going to go down for the supply curve right when supply increases there's likely going to be less unemployment because there's going to be more employment because there's more production and inflation is likely going to go down. And then the opposite occurs. If there's a decrease in aggregate supply, likely that's going to increase unemployment and increase inflation as when there's less supply, whether it's aggregate or normal, that's going to increase prices and inflation. So once again, go ahead and pause here and kind of read through this and then, uh, you know, take your guess and then I'll draw the uh, actual Phillips curve here in a second. So label the x-axis as the unemployment rate, so that's a percentage, and the y-axis is the inflation rate. Now that's different, and I'm going to erase this. The ASAD model is a bit different because it's the price level, which is like CPI or the GDP deflator, where this is the percentage change in inflation. And then the ASAD model shows real GDP, and this is showing the unemployment percentage. So in the long run... It relates to the two variables. You have to think about it, but it makes sense once I give you the answer. So in the long run, for the ASAD model, it is vertical, the aggregate supply curve, where GDP is fixed around a potential output. So for the long run Phillips curve, when we think about, well, what can inflation do in the long run? And then what assumption do we make at our potential output? And that is also our full employment level of output which then kind of indicates the long-run Phillips curve being vertical. That inflation can kind of be anything in the long run, but there's, in the long run, the assumption that we reach our natural rate of unemployment. Then in the short run, it shows a trade-off between unemployment and inflation. So we notice there's a negative correlation in the short run. That usually, if unemployment goes up, inflation goes down, and then vice versa. If unemployment is higher, I'm sorry, um, I did that backwards, but you guys get it. If the unemployment rate is higher, inflation tends to be lower. If unemployment is lower, then we notice that inflation tends to be higher. And so this is based a lot on the empirical data from the 1960s. First part. Unemployment's going to go down, inflation's going to go up. So we're just going to move along that short-run Phillips curve. So what we're going to come to know as the Phillips curve is going to be opposite of the short-run aggregate supply curve. So it ends up being a mirror image of the short-run aggregate supply curve. If the aggregate demand shifts, if we go back to our... So if we look at a short run aggregate supply curve and then the short run Phillips curve, it's as if we put a mirror here to kind of, you know, like I said, mirror what's happening on the SRAS. So likewise, if the SRAS increases to the right, SRPC is the short run Phillips curve is going to decrease to the left. If SRAS decreases to the left, then SRPC is going to increase to the right. And then with aggregate demand shifts, <clears throat> so we just kind of isolate. So let's say if aggregate demand increases, right, we're moving up into the right along the short run aggregate supply curve. So on the Phillips curve, we're going to be moving up into the left on the Phillips curve. Now, if we think about it, unemployment rate, inflation rate, right, if aggregate demand is increasing, like during an expansion, 
we'd likely notice that inflation is going to go up because people are buying goods and services and unemployment is going to go down because we're going to need more workers to produce that increased aggregate demand uh, production level. So what's happening here is the unemployment rate is decreasing from here to here and the inflation rate is rising. And we can show that on a stagnant short run Phillips curve. So aggregate demand causes an, so if we go down here, an increase in inflation and a decrease in unemployment. And this is going to be a movement down, I'm sorry, up the Phillips curve, just like we did up above. If aggregate demand decreases or causes a, uh, when aggregate demand falls, it decreases inflation and increases unemployment, which is going to be movement down the short run Phillips curve. So as aggregate demand decreases and moves to the left around the aggregate supply curve in the short run, then on the Phillips curve, sorry, on the Phillips curve, we're going to be moving to the right along it as unemployment is going to go up and inflation is going to go down. So if there's an increase, which is shift to the right of the short run aggregate supply curve, with more production comes lower prices. And with more, um, ag more production comes less unemployment. So both of those are going to decrease. So if I just kind of show, here's my short run Phillips curve and inflation rate, unemployment rate. So let's say if we start here at point one, if both decrease, we have to go decrease unemployment and decrease inflation. There's no way I can end up on the same Phillips curve. So I'm going to have to draw a new Phillips curve that's shifted to the left to show that both have decreased. And then vice versa, as SRAS decreases, and that's cost push inflation, it's going to cause higher inflation levels and higher unemployment levels, which then means our Phillips curve is going to shift to the right. So this one was decrease, decrease, shift left. This one is going to be increase, increase, shift right. And so supply shock are the only thing are not the only thing that's going to fix uh, shift the Phillips curve. With the Phillips curve is what we show the expected inflation rate and what people um, expect and what the economy expect. So it's a lot like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we expect inflation to go up, it will. And um, that's going to cause the Phillips curve to shift. So if the expected rate of inflation increases, again, I'll draw a new... And to show this idea, I'm going to add in the long run Phillips curve. So where these two curves meet is expected inflation. So whatever this level is, let's say it's 2%. That's the expected level of inflation. Now let's say during current economic situation that we notice that the actual rate of, un of inflation, sorry, is 1%. So now we've deviated away from expected. Now it doesn't mean our ex expectations have changed. It means that the actual inflation rate is 1%. So if we continually expect this 2%, but we kept, keep noticing that actual inflation is lower, eventually our expectations are gonna adjust downwards so that we now expect that actual rate of inflation being 1%. So that would cause the Phillips curve to shift so that our expectations change. So when the short run Phillips, if, uh, so here we are, when the expected rate of inflation increases, the SRA PC is going to shift to the right so that expectations go up and the actual rate of inflation will likely increase also because that's going to pull that inflation with it. And if expected inflation decreases, that's going to shift to the left and inflation will decrease with it as well. Because if we expect higher inflation, we're going to hurry up and buy goods and services quickly because we know our, the prices are going to be rising pretty quickly. All right, so down at the bottom in the practice problems, if the government increases spending, which will then increase aggregate demand, how will it affect inflationary expectations? So if we expect that aggregate demand is going to go up, that's going to cause the price level to increase. And we are eventually going to expect higher inflation. So a shift in aggregate demand by itself isn't going to change or shift the short and Phillips curve. 
but it's the increase in inflationary expectations that if that happens, that will shift the curve. But the increase in government spending by itself probably isn't going to increase too much the inflationary expectations. If people are confident that a new Federal Reserve policy will achieve and maintain price stability, again, not going to influence inflationary expectations. So it's not going to change anything. Three, what will happen to the actual rate of inflation if people expect a higher inflation rate in the future? Well, that's going to increase the actual rate because people expect it. And for consumers, what that's going to mean is they're going to hurry up and go out and buy things now before the price goes up. So what's going to happen is that's going to increase aggregate demand because they're expecting higher inflation. Not like a number one, it's saying that aggregate demand increases first, but that's not really going to change inflationary expectations. But if people expect a higher rate of inflation, they're going to hurry up and go out and buy the goods now before the price goes up. And because the the people are expecting higher inflation, the short run Phillips curve is going to shift and increase. Um, and then vice versa, if people expect a lower inflation, then the actual rate of inflation will go down. What does the SOAP of the LRPC indicate about the trade-off? Well, trade-off refers to a negative relationship and that doesn't exist. So there is no relationship between inflation and unemployment in the long run, which is why it's vertical and not downward sloping like the short run is. So for the multiple choice, the answer key exists. And so if you have individual questions about any of these problems, just uh, send me an email and I can do some of the uh, more commonly missed questions from the Phillips Curve practice. So I won't do every one individually, but as I get... Uh, questions from you guys, I'll post a video showing the most commonly missed or ones that, you know, people had questions about individually in a later video. All right, so I do want to do the free response because I imagine there's going to be a lot of questions once you get this far. So we'll see later today what the AP free responses look like, but this is an example of a previous year's AP macro free response question. And I've taken out, if you notice, it's like A, B, C, D, where did E go? Well, for this for the purpose of this, I just simply copied and pasted and cut out E. I don't remember what the E one was. Um, but just so you know, you're like, where's E? Well, it's because I chopped it down for the purpose of focusing on the Phillips curve for, um, for this. So assume the United States is in a long-run equilibrium. So what I'm thinking about is the ASAD model where we're at full employment. With an expected inflation rate of 6% and an unemployment rate of 5%, and the nominal interest rate is 8%. So A, using a correct label graph with both the short run and long run Phillips curve and the relevant numbers from above show the current long run equilibrium as point A. So um, take a minute and pause here and then I'll start drawing the graph here um, in a minute or maybe you've already tried it. So Phillips curve, we have the inflation rate, we have the unemployment rate, long run Phillips curve. So we're in a long run equilibrium. So same thing with the ASAD model, that here is point A at an unemployment rate of 5%. So that goes here. And an inflation rate of 6%. So we're in a long run equilibrium. So short and long run are kind of meeting where that's where we're for this part of the question, the nominal interest rate doesn't, doesn't do anything yet. We're going to get to that here in uh, B. So B has to calculate the real interest rate. So the real of anything is equal to the nominal of that same thing minus inflation. So the real interest rate, the real, is equal to the nominal interest rate minus the inflation. So if the nominal inflation rate, this would be B, is... 8% and inflation is 6%, then that would make the real interest rate equal to 2%, and that would be the answer for B. C. Assume now the Federal Reserve decides a targeted inflation rate of 3%, so obviously that's lower than the 6% that it currently is. What open market operations should the Fed uh, undertake? So in this case, the Fed is trying to lower inflation from its current rate, and 
in order to lower inflation, they'd have to use contractionary or tight monetary policy, which thus would work to sell bonds. And that's the answer to this one. Open market operation is not something we've talked about in IB before, specifically, because we can just use the term, you know, buy or sell bonds. So in the AP, they like to make use of the phrase open market operation, which refers to the buying or selling of government securities or bonds. So for C, the way that AP would want you to answer this would just be with the phrase for C of sell bonds. And that's it. D, using a correct label graph of the money market, show how the Federal Reserve's actions you identified in part C1 will affect the nominal interest rate. So now we're getting into some crossover with monetary policy. So in the money market, it even tells us in the problem that show the effect on the nominal interest rate. So if you can't remember what interest rate goes in the money market, they've actually just told you. So we have the vertical supply of money the demand for money. And so if the, and they want you to show the effect on the nominal interest rate. So they want you to make sure that you show what's the effect of the nominal interest rate by showing this. It's not enough to just simply say like, oh, it's this dot and then where we're going. So the Fed's trying to contract the money supply or decrease it. So supply of money decreases, which causes the nominal interest rate to rise. And so this is the proper notation for what they're looking for on the nominal interest rate. Nominal interest rate one, nominal interest rate two. The increase helps us to show that the interest rate has risen. And then, like I said, I skipped E for this problem just to focus on the Phillips curve. So assume the Federal Reserve action is successful. What will happen to each of the following as the economy approaches a new long-run equilibrium? So um, what this is referring to is the action on how are we going to get to a new like this would be it doesn't say point b but this is kind of like what's happening so we're now going to say that inflation is going to decrease so the federal action federal reserve action is successful and now we notice a three percent which was their target which is here so the only way to do that is to have decreased the short run Phillips curves to reach that new long run equilibrium. It doesn't say to show it on your graph, but I think visually that helps of showing it on your graph. And usually they try to help you out and lead you down a path. So sometimes an answer in A can help you in an answer later on. So the short run Phillips curve to answer F1, the short run Phillips curve will decrease because inflationary expectations will decrease. And then F2, the natural rate of unemployment, which is shown at the long run Phillips curve where that, you know, it's vertical at that percentage. So the natural rate of unemployment doesn't change. There's no change. Um, so that would kind of be the answer. And the reason is, uh, inflationary expectations aren't going to change how much the Phillips curve or what the uh, the long run Phillips curve is, the location of it at that that rate. The only way to shift to the long run Phillips curve, I kind of make. So if we were going to shift the long run Phillips curve to the left to show that, let's say, the natural rate of unemployment has decreased. So natural rate one, natural rate. To, the only way to shift the LRPC is if the LRAS curve shifts. When we're looking at, you know, price level versus a natural rate of GDP or the potential output. So if the economy grows, and it grows for two reasons, or one of two reasons, technology or more better resources. If the economy grows, LRAS increases, then our natural rate of unemployment decreases. 